את נשמות קדושי פיטסבורג. Rabbi Jeffrey Myers singing his prayer for Pittsburgh and for the 11 congregants who were killed three years ago today. The rabbi prayed for us all to remember their sacrifice and reflect on the lives they lived. Our coverage continues tonight with Ken Rice, who's observed today's commemoration at Shenley Park. Ken, good evening. Kim, good evening. You know, for the people who survived the attack, those who were attending the Shabbat services that morning at one of the three congregations that shared the Tree of Life building, these annual observances bring renewed attention and a lot of renewed questions. How are you doing? Are things getting easier for you? One survivor told me that while those kinds of expressions of concern and support are appreciated, there are other things, she says, we all should consider. Ask Audrey Glickman what Pittsburgh should remember as we mark three years since the attack at Tree of Life, and she'll tell you first to remember that it can happen again. The one big thing to know is that you have to be aware of your surroundings and you have to know what to do ahead of time. Know, know that run, hide, fight really does work and you should run if you can hide if you can't run, and fight if you're faced with it. Audrey Glickman survived three years ago by hiding amid bags of clothing in a storage room, and she credits the active shooter training she received at the synagogue down the street where she works, Beth Shalom. Did you surprise yourself that you were able to execute those steps when it was really happening? We acted in the moment. We all acted in the moment, and moments go slow when something like that is happening. The training kicked in. Something else Pittsburgh should know is that congregants who survived the Tree of Life attack have become part of a global community interconnected with survivors of attacks in Poway and Parkland and Charleston and Christ Church, all supporting each other through shared grief. And it creates a web of strength, a, a, a giant fabric of, of strength and solidarity strengthening us to fight against what we're against, which is people who are discontented in life and are wallowing in hatred. I suggested it would be understandable if she felt hatred toward the man who attacked her congregation. I don't have the capacity to hate him because that takes too much energy. Would I like to see him suffer the death penalty? Yes, but not as a punishment as a way to terminate his, his connection with others. He is right now influencing others to do the same thing. And Andre Glickman tells me if the attacker were to be isolated on a remote island forever, that would be okay with her too. She says the main thing that is important to her is that this person be silenced forever. There is a difference of opinion about the death penalty. Other survivors, other congregants have made their opposition to the death penalty known.